For the third stage of our VDC capstone, the KOTV team has chosen to elevate our design intent models to being coordinated as well. A key part of coordination is minimizing and eliminating any of the conflicts between these models. Tracking these issues will ensure LOD is federated enough to conduct accurate estimates going forward, as well as conduct simulations and energy analyses. Our team has performed vigorous clash detection tests to track, manage, and document these issues using both Navisworks and BIMTRAC. And I'm going to explain my workflow behind this. Depending on the scale and nature of your project, the scope of your clash detections may vary. Our project, the Johnson Cobb Building, is of a scale great enough to produce thousands of clashes, many of which are minor and would typically be resolved on site. Ceiling tiles, for example, may clash with structural columns. However, it may be that the quantity of ceiling tiles required for estimation may not change once resolved. A crew of ceiling installers would modify the ceiling system to suit those particular areas on site, a commonly dealt with situation within their trade scope. I have chosen to prioritize clashing structural, architectural, and MEP models because we believe these to be some of the most important and fundamental to our building system. The process begins, of course, by taking the most current versions of our Revit models into Navisworks. You can see here I have my MEP model. I would go to Add-ins, External Tools, and Navisworks 2021 to export the files in NWC. You can see I have one existing here with a quite generic name. Well, each of us have our own locally saved folders where we store and update these NWCs. This allows us to split up the work individually and perform our own sets of tests. Once you do this, I'm not gonna update this file here just for the sake of time. You can open a brand new NWF document in Navisworks, go to append and start selecting all of the models that you wish to clash. As I said here, I was going to clash my architectural my structural, and my MEP. One more. And personally, I like to have my background black. Now we can save this file as an NWF and keep it in that source folder with the rest of the NWCs or anywhere else. So now we can begin our clash detection. I'm gonna to go to Clash Detective, Selection Tree, as well as Sets. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. But first, we have to consider the clashes that we want to conduct. And in this case, I wanna clash my MEP with my architectural model. But I also understand this is gonna result in thousands of clashes, which would be hard to navigate. A good way to mitigate this issue is by breaking down the clash further by selection sets. So specifically, I'm considering clashing my HVAC equipment with my ceilings from architectural. So I've already set up my ceilings here, but I'm gonna show you how to create a new selection set for MEP HVAC. I have opened up my MEP levels in my selection tree, and just going through here, I'm gonna select everything that relates to HVAC equipment. Perfect, there we are. And then create a new selection set. I'm gonna call this, of course, HVAC. And then I can take this and drag it into MEP. So there we have our two selection sets that I wish to clash together. From here, I can go to add test in the clash detective and just rename this ceilings versus HVAC. And in the selection tab, I would select ceilings because it's first and add to the selection, use current selection. Now I must choose to what degree an element should be considered clashing when it's tested with its counterpart. For the scope of our federation, I want to detect issues that are about 100 millimeters in penetration for the first go around. Typically, it's more than enough to start, and I can always adjust this value later and then rerun the test. But for now, I'll run with this. Perfect. And now we go instantly into our results tab. I only have two clashes, which is pretty sweet. Usually, you're going to have maybe a couple hundred. But in order to track and resolve these clashes systematically, we must begin evaluating each of these clashes by their, char by their characteristics and then group them accordingly. 
Grouping clashes can, into digestible and common batches will result in a single organized issue that can then be assigned to a particular group member and provide the modeler with the clarity of their responsibilities. So I'm going to take these two clashes here and I'm going to group them. There we are. And I'll give this group a pretty generic name. Oh, ceilings and HVAC. And its status, since I've recognized it, I'm going to set it to active. Perfect. <clears throat> and of course, remember to save your NWF file once you've set this up. I should also mention that the visibility for these clashes can be tweaked in the sidebar here. Dim other, you can see exactly how it relates to the rest of the system or the rest of the uh, systems that you're clashing. And you can dim them to isolate exactly what the clashes are. But at this point, we're going to publish your tests to BIM track. And this will supplement the issue management in Navisworks and allow us to track clashes directly back into Revit. I open up my project in our BIM track add in here. Click open. Select my project. Now, finally, I have additional tabs. So, what I can do from this point is cl uh, click clashes to issues. And this is going to publish my clashes as issues. So you see here, we have ceilings versus HVAC. Perfect. I, add, I can add additional information here and elaborate on the nature of the published issue, but I prefer to do this directly on the BIM track website. For now, I'm going to keep it general, and then I'm going to export it just from here. And we are back into Revit my MEP model, and I've also attached my architectural model with a few visibility settings uh, changed to make this issue a little bit easier to recognize. So going into BIM track, I log in, and right here I see my HVAC versus ceilings issue. I'll go, I can go view and edit to see any of the instructions I may have given myself, <clears throat> uh, as well as look at some of the photos that describe the situation. If I've marked this up, I can use that uh, uh, that information as well. And I can publish it back into BIMTrack if I wanted to make any changes in Revit. But I can also go view in model. And here we see the, the area. <clears throat> and it just removed the selection box. You can tweak it so as soon as you click model in view, it snaps. But for the sake of this explanation, I can just show exactly where the issue is. I can even just make this simpler for myself. Click those elements, click section box, and there we are. So I see here that actually it's the ceiling that should be lowered and not the MEP itself. I can change, I can make these changes into the uh, issue itself and say, look, this is not an MEP issue. This is a architectural issue. And I could shift these ceilings up. I can see that there would be no issue if they were at the same level here. Of course, we don't have in our drawing sets uh, an explanation of exactly how high um, this roof is supposed to be. So we are allowed to make our own uh, recommendations for ourselves as to how we can solve these issues. Okay, so here I have architectural open now with my MEP visibility settings adjusted. I've isolated the issue the same way by going view and model, as you can see here. And I can see that more than just one ceiling tile is set to this elevation that's conflicting with my uh, HVAC. So everybody can solve their issues using any techniques they wish. I like working in 3D view because even with that, when I have a section box, I can quickly pan to a side and not have to worry about work planes. I can just make adjust uh, adjustments quite easily. So here we have that solved. Uh, if I had any more to resolve between uh, architecture and MEP, I would. But now I'm going to update my NWC file to check my work uh, back in Navisworks. If I go to the add-ins tab, I can export my model. And actually at this point, I'm gonna go into just a regular kind of 3D, 3D view. There we are. And for the sake of making sure everything is decent, I'm gonna unload my MEP. 
there. And I'm going to go to add-ins and just save over my existing architectural model. That's the beauty of using these generic names. I can just replace it quite, quite quickly. So I'll save that. Yes, I do want to replace it. This is going to take a few moments, but I'll meet you back in uh, Navisworks and we'll, I'll, I'll show you how, how uh, seamless this is, just saving over. It saves a lot of time. Having updated my NWC file under its original name, I can now drag the NWF file into Navisworks and all the changes should be reloaded. You can see here that there's a warning sign saying that changes have been made. And I can click update and I can see that that one clash has now been resolved. Going back to that group, you can see that the items are still highlighted but there's no longer any clash. And that's fantastic, but now we have to update our BIM track as well. So with BIM track, we'll open that up. Oh, there we go. Select the project. Perfect. And then we can just click clashes to issues just like before. And this time I want to make sure that I don't create a new issue with this new revision. I want to replace it. So I can have that. Select exactly what I'm concerned about. And in the meantime, I can actually change this status to closed since it is no longer a problem. Publish. So at this point, we have finally closed all of our issues and we've resolved all of our clashes. It's time to change gears here and generate final reports. Having used both Navisworks and BIMTRAC to manage our issues, I can log reports of our clashes in two different ways. First, I'm gonna start with BIMTRAC. If I go to the metrics page here, I can see exactly what each team member has been assigned and the status of their issues, as well as an overview of any outstanding clashes open or in progress. If I go to the reports page, we can generate a report based on a custom filter set or leave it blank and generate a complete report of everything that we've logged into BIMTRAC. Once I click print, I'm brought to a new page and a complete report can be printed directly to PDF. Now I've already done this, but you can see it would just look exactly like this. I'm going to go into Navisworks now to show you the other way of generating reports. I find this to be more standardized. We go from results to the report page. And you can see we can choose exactly which information we want to keep and we can play around with this if we want to. Uh, but for the sake of this, I'm going to show you that we can export it as either a text report or a report based uh, online using an HTML. Now. Uh, some may find this impractical, but having our project deliverables maintained on our project website, we'll be able to describe our grouped clashes in a much more orderly fashion. So I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. Clash demo. And over here, you can open that up and voila. Not as much information that would be uh, contained in a BIM issue report uh, because of course that includes all of the thumbnails and the annotations included as well as any linked images or comments that uh, anybody has made uh, while while constructing and uh, undertaking the the clash but uh, this is this is how you generate reports okay sweet so now I have gone over how our team has performed our clash detection and hopefully you've also learned about the many benefits of using BIM track integrated into this process it may seem like a great deal of work to set up, but depending on the size of the team concerned with fixing these issues, tracking the conflicts becomes much more easier when it's streamlined and easier to manage in aggregate. Thanks for watching.